Alright, everybody. Um, I'm calling this video Bargaining with JRPGs. <laughs> um, I think when I announced it, I initially said like it was gonna be like how JRPGs can be good or something. Or wait, hang on. I'll, I'll actually look up. I'll look up my fucking tweets. See if you follow me. You know we're currently in the Ziad Hates JRPGs arc. Um, I changed my Twitter display name to fuck JRPGs as well. Uh, definitely the main thing that sparked it was FF7 Remake. Um, figuring out what a good JRPG is. <laughs> okay, that, that would be pretty funny as well. But yeah, I'm gonna call it bargaining. Bargaining with JRPGs. Um, um, yeah, um, I think, so, yeah, like I said, it was mostly sparked by FF7 Remake. Because it really, it just puts into focus so much of what I don't like in games in general. Like, the amount of filler, that none of the fights really fucking matter, or like, like... I made, I made some notes. <laughs> I'm already straying from my notes a little bit. I should maybe just get into my notes to, like, discuss what I'm trying to talk about. Like, I guess my main thesis is, like, JRPG combat turn... Like, I'm specifically talking... Well, yeah. So I was gonna say I'm talking about specifically turn-based JRPGs, right? For the most part. But, like, FF7 Remake, for example, is such an odd case where it's not really an action game, but it's, like, by definition not turn-based. But it is kind of, like, it is basically the same combat system as the original, you know? It's like, in a very odd way, it's almost the same combat system. Um, and like, the thesis I, I want to make is that JRPG combat, or turn-based combat, or that kind of combat, let's just call it that kind of combat, is gonna have a very hard time, like, being satisfying on its own. And, um... There's, like, a lot of fundamental problems and, like, a lot of fundamental issues with the genre that I feel like a lot of people don't want to really acknowledge, you know? And, um, to, to the point where it just makes me so confused that people just eat those games up, you know? Just eat up that boring combat and, like, just will get into fight after fight after fight even though it's not that interesting, right? Um... Um, I want to go, I want to go through that, and then also figure out, uh, what the fuck is a good JRPG? Like, how do you make a good JRPG? What is, how does a JRPG work well for me, personally? Um, see, I, I like to think about this. So, Donkey, he made, like, two videos. Like, his Octopath Traveler review, I think, and, um, the Animal Crossing review, where he, like, says, like, yeah, I come down the hardest on games that are 60 hours long, but that you master in, like, two hours. Um, see, in a JRPG, you have to think. And, like, yeah, so I brought up Octopath Traveler, because in that game, for that game, he brought up this idea that you get into, like, a fight with the rat, and, like, they make it this, like, epic fucking thing. There's, like, a whole ass transition to the fight, but then the actual fight is just to tap attack on the menu, right? Like... I just remember saying to people that I got through every fight in Chrono Trigger, like through most fights really, like through most of the normal encounters, just by uh, using the normal attack over and over again and then healing up after every battle. Um, because like the game just has no like meaningful economy whatsoever and like... Um, yeah. Like, in Chrono Trigger, there's, like, just no incentive to really optimize anything, you know? It's, it really does not matter what the fuck you do. Um, and, like, that's the thing. Like, you have to think in a DMC or something. Um, the game rewards you for playing well, right? Inherently. So that's already... It solves that problem, right? But even when you're just mashing in DMC, it's more fun than fucking Chrono Trigger. 
it's more fun than hitting an item on the menu, you know? And I, like, people are saying, oh, it's an unfair comparison. No, it's not. It just shows that fundamentally this genre has like a problem, you know? That it needs to, it needs to do certain things to overcome the problem. And like a lot of games, games are not doing that. Um, okay, let me get into my notes. So, you have to think <laughs> in a turn-based RPG, right? You have a menu. The menu is everything you can do. That's like your entire list of actions. Um, that list is not very long, right? So that's already like, it's it's already it already puts a cap on the amount of things you can possibly do, right? Uh, now, I'd be the first person to say that the amount of things you can do is not as important as the amount of things a single thing can do, right? Like, obviously the Miyamoto quote about the fucking a good idea is a, an idea that can solve two problems at once. Um, so like in DMC, for example, a jump is a jump. Um, but it also has iframes, so it acts as like a defensive maneuver, right? That's good design. Um, but then also the jump, you cannot just jump off of the floor, but also you can jump again in the air and then you can jump off of enemies. And that, like, when you jump, when you do enemy step, that lets you attack again in the air. Um, so it already fulfills like, like four different functions, right? Just as one button. Now in a JRPG, the list of things you can do is shorter, but also, Usually, your shit just does not do that much, right? Or, like, at least not do that much that you can predict. Um, when you attack, when you use a normal attack, think about a, like, normal, like, a very, um, traditional elemental system in an RPG. You attack, and there's a chance that you crit, right? Um, then with a fire attack, there's a chance that you... Um, that you do burn damage or something, that the enemy will, like, keep uh, receiving damage over time. Uh, with an ice attack, there's a chance that they get frozen, blah, blah, stuff like that, right? But that's not really stuff you can predict, and not really stuff... Well, yeah, for the most part, it's not really stuff you can work into your strategy. In some isolated instances, that is true. Um, like, I could see a scenario where it, like, boosts your luck and then it, like, increases your chance to do something, right? Um, but you have to think... Because it's not really dynamic, right? A driver, like, a turn-based system is not really dynamic. Like, at some point, your enemy will just repeat certain patterns. Especially in boss fights. Um, at a certain point, you do just run a flowchart. In every case, like... When... Like, see, you have, for example, this idea of poison in games, right? Uh, and poison, poison in JRPG, just being able to poison enemies. Um, like, in most regular encounters, there are more optimal ways to deal with the enemies than to do poison. Um, and then also, like, a lot of the bosses don't even let you use it. But then also, let's imagine a way, a scenario where poison actually is really good and really useful. Why the fuck would you do anything else? after that, you know? Like, you're gonna have a period in your game where that's, like, your most powerful thing, and then at some point it's gonna stop being your most powerful thing, and then you change to something else, right? But the combat, the the actual thing you do in combat is always gonna be extremely dictated by either your party or your enemy, or, you know, both. Like, a combination of both. There's never... Um... Yeah, like... See, obviously you could say, oh, that's like kind of true for an action game. Like, uh, if I have an enemy, obviously I have to approach them differently in an action game. But it's still, like... You have to think, in, in an action game, if I stinger a guy, just the angle that I stinger him from will throw him in a different direction, and that will change the entire flow of the fight, right? Like, positioning and all this stuff is important. Um... Yeah, like I said, in, uh, 
like, I think just looking at long boss fights in JRPGs is a great example. Because, like I said, the AI is just so limited. It will, like, it has some contingency scenarios where it will, like, respond very specifically to certain things to stop you from doing, like, dumb bullshit. You can, yeah, uh, like, I actually hate this kind of shit where, for example, you can cast, um, you can, like, nullify basically every element on yourself. You can just completely defend yourself in, like, an SMT game. Uh, and then the boss, what they will do is they will just cast an almighty attack. And it's like, what the fuck, man? Like, I should feel kind of smart for defending myself like that, but then the game obviously has to come up with some kind of trick to um, not let you do that. And it's just kind of absurd and, like, not... There's no internal logic to it, you know? There's no, like, good reason why the enemy would do that. It's just a way to prevent you from, like, playing a certain way, right? Um, see, and, like, a lot of games that I like are like that. Um, and I can kind of accept it as, like, sort of a, um, a necessary evil, right? But it's it still shows, like, I think it's a good example for just the limitations of the system. Like, you think about a game, game like Nocturne, and, um, like... You need to buff yourself, you need to buff your defense, blah, 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 and you just keep... Basically, the way a fight, a boss fight plays out is that you rotate between all these different things, right? All these different kind of attacks and all these different kind of buffs. But once you have that sequence down, you just repeat it as long as you need to. Because obviously the enemy is not like... It's very rigid, right? It can't really respond to you dynamically. It can't really respond to you with any kind of randomness. And if it... If it is random, it stops being fair, right? So, um... At a certain point, you're gonna stop thinking, right, in those fights. You made your most interesting decision when you came up with the plan, right? But then once you execute the plan, it's just a matter of fucking, like, pressing buttons, you know? Um... I'm not sure if I'm get really getting the point across. Hmm. See, I think a, a lot of it is compounded by the fact that JRPGs are so fundamentally built on repetition. Like, you keep, you will keep running into similar enemy configurations over and over and over again. You're gonna fight a lot. Um, and like, yeah, um, it's just like there's no, like because of the rigidity of the whole, the inherent system is very rigid, right? You can't, like, you can't move. There's no positioning. There's no, there's no weird random things that can happen, right? Um, generally, right? So what it means is that a lot of enemies, they just have one exact way that is like very optimal to beat them. And then you just keep doing that. There's no reason not to do it. Um... See, in my notes, I said, nothing fucking matters in Xenoblade. <laughs> because you have to think, Xenoblade, it's like a game. So in JRPG, you, you usually at least have to deal with, like, limited resources and stuff like that. And then, uh, obviously, you need to heal after every battle, and you, like, take damage and stuff. And then there can be scenarios where you fucking get fucked up, and then, you know, it affects how you go on, basically. In Xenoblade, that doesn't happen. Because you always get healed after every fight, and there's no, there's no resources that you need to manage, right? There's no uh, MP or something like that. Um, everything is handled via cooldowns. Uh, I think cooldowns inherently not my favorite mechanic. <laughs> um, it is a little bit better in an RPG than in an action game because, uh, like in Xenoblade, your positioning doesn't really matter, so you can't just hide while your cooldown is happening and stuff. So it's a little bit better, but still, you have to think. I was trying to come up with an example for this. Like, imagine you're in a fight, and we're looking at a span of time of 100 seconds. And the cooldown for this one attack that you have is 10 seconds. So if I use the attack the moment I get it, the moment it's available, I can cast the attack 10 times. 
Whereas if I vo if I wait, I ca I can only cast fewer times, right? So really, there is no reason to ever hold on to it. You just do the cooldown as soon as you get it. Um, and that's like for me, that's one of the big reasons why Xenoblade is so mindless. Um, like what the fuck do you do in those fights? Like what? Like, I guess there's like synergy between your team members, right? There's certain sequences that you can run that are really optimal but then again it runs into the same problem where you just keep doing that for that specific enemy you know you're just gonna do that over and over again like in an action game <laughs> sorry i always i always go i feel like i always go like well in an action game it's like this um but yeah like think about wonderful 101 right i was thinking wonderful 101 it feels inherently a little bit more limited than some other action games because you do kind of deal with a lot of enemies in a similar way. Oops, sorry. Almost dropped my bottle of water. Uh, that was also empty, so it wouldn't have fucking mattered. But... Yeah, it is empty. <laughs> um, you stun them first, and then you launch them, and then when they're in the air, you can like do whatever you want to them, basically. Uh, but then obviously, depending on the enemy, their weight is just super different and the way you have to juggle them is different and it's very dynamic like a lot of things can dynamically go wrong and you have to readjust so it's already not the same as a jrpg but like even that first period when you stun them just depending on how they move there's so much randomness and so much like and not bad randomness right it's not it's not like oh it did something i completely didn't expect it's not like it's just like stuff like oh he maybe walked left instead of right you know it's stuff that feels natural. Um, and then obviously the order in which they use the attacks and stuff is like super... Well, not super random, but like, you know, it's it's not completely predictable. Um, and like in a JRPG, because... I guess the thing is just like, if it were super random... Like, there's no potential in a turn-based game, or like in a game like Xenoblade or something like that, where the randomness could be like fun or fair you know if something super random happens if the enemy just randomly crits me that feels fucking shitty you know that does not feel fair because i can't do anything against it really um in an action game i can do stuff against it and that's why it's fine um and that's why a lot of those games aren't that random and that's why you just keep running into the same patterns now in xenoblade uh, i do like mm, just the idea that you can topple an enemy, and then, what was it, it was like, topple, break, something, something. It was like, a, an order of things you need to do to like, get the enemy into a different state. I think that's kind of cool. That's like, a different take on RPG combat that I haven't really seen before. But, again... It is kind of like, yeah, like, every enemy has... And, I have, it's been fucking years since I played Xenoblade, so I'm not... I can't speak very intelligent about it, but I do really get the sense that every enemy just has one way of dealing with them, and there's no reason to ever change up the strategy, unless you meet a different enemy. Yeah. Um, let me look at my notes again. Yeah. Boss fights feel long and challenging, but you're also just running a flow chart. Yeah, I mean, I already talked about that. With, like, that's the thing. I think I want to give it like Nocturne again, and then people are always like, "Oh, dude, this game is so hard and stuff." Like, is it that hard? Um, I think it's just when people get into these super minute details of combat and JRPGs and like think, oh, it makes the game super challenging and stuff. I think you're like kind of fooling yourself because you're still playing a turn-based RPG, you know? Like nothing you're doing is that interesting or deep, you know? You're not like some master strategist because you fucking buffed yourself that one time, you know? I think, yeah, I already said this, I think, but like your most interesting choices are actually outside of the battles. Um, when you're in the battle, it's like very obvious what you need to do. Um, I do think, yeah, so. Yeah, oh, wow, I'm already at that point in my notes, wow. The bottom line is that you really make your most interesting choices when you build your party. Yeah, oh my God, I'm so smart. Um. See, think about a game like SMT4. Um, 
or like even a Persona game or stuff like that. Like I think the SMT series generally with random encounters is better, or like regular encounters I should say, because a lot of a lot of the recent games obviously they're not random anymore, uh, which is good because I don't like random encounters. Um, dude, fucking random encounters! Oh my god, that's like me. Like when someone asks me why JRPGs are not that good, I'll just say random encounters. That's like a valid reason. Anyway, um. What I like in those games is that there is an amount of randomness that actually does feel fair. And like, I think you can contrast it very well with a game like FF7 Remake, because, or like a game like Chrono Trigger, where you have these like very sort of designed fights. You just run into a group of enemies that, that was like specifically kind of placed there. And um, yeah, just the stuff you do is never that interesting. Oh, see, thinking about it... Yeah, in FF7 Remake, like, your enemies do move around and stuff. Like, yeah, but, like, that's the thing I'm thinking about it. Like, every time an enemy did move around in a weird way, it was more frustrating than fun. Like, just the fl like, finding the flying enemies in 7 Remake sucks. Ugh, it's just the worst. Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, like, the way... A lot of SMT games do randomness is A, because your party management is just so fucking open-ended. Like, it's completely random. It's complete chaos. Uh, like, when you look at your own party, every player's party will just look completely different. Because there's so many fucking possible ways to build your party. So that alone, when you, have, when you see a fire guy, but you don't have fire, like, what the fuck do you do, you know? And then you have to come up with something on the spot. Like, that can totally happen. That's obviously a very simplistic example, but, like... Also think about... I think SMT4, specifically... Um... Is one of the... If one... Is, is like, for me, does is one of the better examples, because... I feel like just the encounters were... The, the enemy composition was the most random in that game. You know? Like... They put enemies in configurations that were really interesting. I feel like in Apocalypse, for example, which is like the direct sequel to 4 and like uses the same mechanics mostly, um, they they made the groups of enemies like that you encounter a lot more homogenous. And, and that actually makes the game less interesting because then you have, an, you have an entire group of enemies that's like weak to ice or something. Uh, and then you just cast ice and they're dead, right? In four, I had way more scenarios. I feel where you have one fire guy, one ice guy, one fucking uh, guy who like blocks all magic and stuff. And you're like, huh? If I just use this one spell, I'll get fucking annihilated. So I have to really carefully consider the order. So there is still like a correct way to do it, right? There's still very much a correct answer and like a very limited list of actions. But it is more like a puzzle, you know? You're figuring out a different puzzle every time. Uh, and for me, that kind of works. Um, I remember just a lot of fights in SMT4 where I very consciously, like, I move to the next turn so I can attack with this party member and then get another turn from that. And, like, just being very particular about the order in which I attack and, like, the order in which attacks I... In the order in which I use specific attacks. I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say, but yeah. Um, obviously, it's been a couple of years since I played SMT4, but like it really felt like that game was the best at it. Um, where it felt fair, but also I... At least as the game was going on, right? At least as the game kept progressing, I definitely had to change up the order in which I use different moves and stuff, at least a little bit. Um, that's still not, like, amazing combat, right? But then you couple it with the fact that you're always changing your party, and, like, always exploring new environments, and the environments are so fucking cool and so intricate and so amazing, and there's not story getting in your way constantly. Um, like, that in that game, the pacing just feels so natural and just works. Um, I think, also, I always thought that Persona... And uh, also, actually, Odyssey, they had a really good way of handling it because, or like, they had a good way of 
making the dungeon crawling combat fucking grind interesting. Um, because there's so much about this like dichotomy between dungeons and outside being outside of dungeons, you know? Um, like both games, I think in Persona it's a little more obvious and a little bit easier to explain. Basically, in Persona, because of the whole social life system, you have a strong incentive to finish the dungeons as quickly as possible, right? Um, and I, like, I should say, I'm currently, I'm designing a game with like kind of an Atrian Odyssey, like you enter a big dungeon kind of element. And I'm looking, I'm trying to figure out a way to, um, like handle the back and forth between those two, like between entering and leaving the dungeon, right? Uh, and Persona is probably the best model because you have an incentive to finish the dungeons as quickly as possible. Because obviously, if you don't do that, you run, you lose days in the social life, as half of the game, uh, days where you could could have done something else, right? Um, but then at the same time. Um, your resources are very limited. You'll, your characters will run out of MP uh, as the game kind of progresses, or as the as you stay in the dungeon, right? Your characters just get more and more exhausted. And Persona 3 was the most emphasized because of um, the fucking the fatigue system, right? You like your characters literally got tired. Actually, wait, did, don't they also get tired in four or no? No, they don't get tired in 4, I'm pretty sure. They only get tired in 3. Um, which is kind of cool, but also, like, your time does not feel as valuable in 3, I think. Uh, so, it kind of, you know... Um, it kind of defeats the point. Um, like, in 3, I didn't really... That's the thing, in 3, I didn't really care about maximizing my time in the dungeons. I feel like in Persona 5, I actually cared about it the most. Um, even though I have problems with that game. I feel like, just because the dungeons were so designed and, like, had such a clear progression to them, I definitely felt like, fuck dude, if I leave early, I will waste so much time, I need to get as far as I can. In 4, yeah, in 4, it felt the pressure was not as on, you know, it felt a little bit more relaxed, um, which is fine, but, like, I mean, 4 is my favorite, for sure, by far. But now that I'm thinking about it, huh, like, 5 actually did that the best. Yeah. Like... And, like, especially with the way the save points and stuff were handled in 5, like, there were... Yeah. Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, wow, that, that was actually pretty cool if I... Damn, dude. Huh. That's crazy, dude. Like, when I made- when I started recording this, I didn't expect to say so much good stuff about Persona 5, but like, now I'm thinking about, huh, you know? I was always- I always thought to myself, like, eh, the dungeons in 5 are not that great, because they're- Like, the puzzles and all the design they put into it doesn't really do that much, it's not really that interesting. Uh, while also they added just fucking cutscenes up the ass, um, compared to Persona 4. And that's still true. But, like, yeah, just the way the save points are spread and the way you're incentivized to keep going, I think that's really great. Um, so, yeah, once you, like, imagine... I had s some really great moments in the third dungeon, especially, where... Imagine you just run out of magic. You run out of MP. But you still want to keep going. And, uh... At that point, you just have to come up with different ways to damage the enemies. And it's great that Persona 5 actually added uh, technical attacks, for example, where if an enemy is poisoned or something, um, and you attack them, then they take more damage. Um, and I think it still it gives you an additional turn as well, so it counts as a critical. Um, and that's really cool. I actually felt like I had ways to fight the enemies after I ran out of MP. And that... Like, the fact that the game encourages me to take that extra risk, I think, is really, like, it's a huge success, I think. Um, and it's a good way to, again, like, handle turn-based RPG structure and combat and stuff. Like, 
it makes you want to fight, it makes you want to think about what you're doing. Uh, and so, yeah, I feel like it's just so simplistic to me when people say, Oh, dude, Nocturne is the best one because it's so hard, dude. Ugh. Like, I feel like the way an RPG motivates you to keep playing, it needs to be way, way more complicated than that. You know, it can't just be, oh, the enemies are just really hard or something, dude. You know? Um, like, an enemy fucking buffing themselves uh, five times in a row in a boss fight is not, like, fucking great genius design, you know? Um, fuck Nocturne. Fuck Nocturne. Fuck people who like Nocturne. Especially. No offense. Um, Atrian Odyssey is similar uh, because obviously the deeper you get into the dungeon, the more information you get about it, right? It's like th a huge element of those games is just gathering information and like making it easier to get through the dungeon. You want to keep progressing because you want to draw a more detailed map. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, and also, like, yeah, and like both games, both Atrium Odyssey and Persona, they just have the strong resource management element. And I think that's super crucial in an RPG. Like, the, it gives you something, like, legitimate to think about that feels dynamic, you know? Like, the way you drain your resources is not, like, flowcharty and linear, like the combat is, usually. Um, is that all I have to say? I mean, that's the end of my notes, anyway. Um, I'll say, like, yeah, just looking at a game like FF7 Remake again, I mean, that's that's the game that started this whole thing, right? A game where you see a guy, and he's weak to fire, and there's, like, no reason not to just use fire, and, like, you have save points and fucking very specific sort of intervals, and then when you get to one, you just, you're just healed completely, and it's, like, nothing really fucking matters. Um... I just don't see what the fuck's so fun about the combat, you know, in that game. Like, why people find that fun. Or, like, why, how people don't find it boring, you know? <laughs> God, dude. And then, obviously, every... Like, the combat would not be that much of an issue if the game around it was not so bad. But it, it's fucking terrible. Oh, uh, dude. Uh, yeah. Wow, I'm actually glad- see, I'm- I'm heading to my girlfriend's place, and I was like, fuck dude, I need to at least record this so I can release it, like, this week. I'm glad that I got this done, holy shit. Uh... Officially, I'm not behind on Patreon stuff, I just need to do the two videos for this month. Uh... The Mega Man Zero video? Yeah, I'm gonna do one on Mega Man Zero. Actually, maybe, hmm, I'm thinking. I was thinking I'll do Hunter Hunter next month. Uh, I'm like at episode 116, this is the last one I finished. What the fuck, dude? By the way, oh my god. Um, I still need to come up, but like, yeah, if I don't finish Hunter x Hunter this month, uh, I still need to come up with a different topic then. Uh, if you have ideas, let me know. If you have ideas, let me know. Hope you enjoyed this. One of the shorter videos I did. Um, yeah, uh, bye bye.